Hey there, this is Thousand Ant and I'm Matt Shell. And in this video, I wanna give you some advice on how to estimate roughly how much money a given game on Steam has earned. Let's get started. For many of you, this may be already a familiar concept. So this is a little bit, I would say, a kind of a game business beginner focused video, but I think from kind of my travels through the internet, there are still a lot of people who are not aware of this technique and it's a useful one to have in your arsenal as you are doing kind of production planning and market research for your next game, trying to pick what game you should make, trying to figure out will your game idea be profitable based on what you know. To kind of cut right to the chase, the box slider method is a method of looking at the number of Steam reviews, which is public information, multiplying it by a number, the box slider number, which many agree is around 50, but of course you can go high or low and it's probably a good idea to calculate a range times the price of the game. And generally speaking, we'll use the price at launch. We know that games go on sale and prices go up and down, right? So you could make this algorithm as complicated as you want to, but as a kind of a good rule of thumb, if you say, okay, the game costs $10, it's got 10 reviews, right? 10 times 10 is 100, and we multiply that by 50, then we can say, well, you know, 100 times 50, we figure this game made roughly $5,000, right? So once you've calculated that $5,000 number, you can then calculate the various deductions that you need to make for things like Steam, platform fee, et cetera. Uh, and generally speaking, around 0.55 of that number should be roughly uh, what you get to keep. Now, if you want all of this in a handy, easy to navigate web interface, there's steamrevenuecalculator.com where you can just type in the number of reviews for a game, the price, and just hit calculate and it'll do the math for you, that's useful. But I also actually recommend making your own spreadsheet so that you can, for example, put in let's say a box lighter number of 50, a box lighter number of 30, uh, because this is a number that changes over time, right? And if you go and search for the box lighter method and look at more recent articles, you'll see devs are pooling anonymized sales data and figuring out, okay, some games have a box lighter number of 50, some are much lower, some are much higher, right? So it's not an exact science, but it is a really useful way to think about is my idea probably going to be profitable, right? And it's worth mentioning there are a few really good bloggers and writers and content creators who cover this topic. Jake Burkett from Grey Alien Games is, is definitely a, an important voice in the space. Ryan Clark from Brace Yourself Games was running for a long time a streaming show called The Clark Tank, and the old episodes are available online to watch. He's actually since stopped doing it live. Uh, but it's still a wealth of information. And there are a few other people out there doing great work in the space. I won't name everybody, but those are good voices to follow and to look at and, and dig into their blog posts and YouTube videos and stuff to learn more about how to do this. Now, let's say we've calculated roughly a gross, you know, number of 5,000, right? Now that's obviously a low number. It's not gonna cover a lot of de development expenses, but what that allows you to do is to do some kind of pre-calculation, pre-planning against your idea, right? So if you're, the number you came up with was 5,000, then you know you need to make your game really quickly and really cheaply, right? And maybe then it could be profitable or maybe it's gonna lose money and you're okay with that. But uh, if your goal is to be a sustainable indie developer, you wanna make profitable games, right? And having an idea of how much similar games in the space have made, is important, right? So what I would recommend is to look at a range of games that are similar, right? Do not just pick the category leader, right? And be like, well, Stardew Valley made, you know, a hundred million dollars or whatever they made. Uh, therefore, if I only make 1% of that, I'll make a million dollars and I'm gonna be fine, right? This is a classic kind of fallacy that a lot of people do be like, it's a billion dollar market. If we can just get 1%, you know, people don't know how hard it is to get 1% of a billion dollar market. So my advice would be to, yes, look at the super successful games, but also look at some mid-tier and less successful games, 
that are ideally as similar as possible to the game that you're thinking about making, both in terms of hooks, the size, the quality of the art, right? And this is a, gonna be a difficult exercise because you have to try to be realistic, right? Be like, am I gonna be able to beat, you know, let's say we're using Stardew Valley as an example, am I gonna be able to beat Stardew Valley for all these metrics and therefore try to, you know, get a similar market size? Or are people gonna look at my game and look at Stardew Valley and be like, well, why would I buy this when I can just buy Stardew Valley, right? So. You have to try to be realistic. It's, it's of course like almost impossible because you're like, no, 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 my game is different. This time is different, right? And we run into all kinds of cognitive biases, right? Where we kind of lie to ourselves and say, you know, no, 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 I'm not like the other people, right? Um, and fall into all kinds of traps that way. That's dealing with that stuff is probably one of the kind of biggest skills of business is just being able to be kind of rational in looking at other people's things and your own thing and comparing them in an apples to apples way, but try, do your best, right? And once you've got a few example games, right, that you think, yeah, my game is similar in mechanics to this, I think I can achieve the art style of it, and we're gonna be of a similar size and kind of market quality roughly, look at how they sold, look at your budget that you've got for your game, right? You say, okay, I think we're gonna need you know, three months to make this game and therefore it's gonna cost us, let's say $90,000. You know, the team takes $30,000 a month to run. Uh, so we're gonna spend about $90,000. So hopefully your kind of middle and average results on your list are making, you know, between, I would say 270 to $500,000 to make that probably like a good bet, right? If your target games are just reaching that number to break even that is basically from in economic terms of failure um if we look at the kind of model that dan cook has put forward um you know he says you basically need for a game to hit and succeed you need to go three to five x the budget because that's going to fund any future flops and failures and so on obviously it's a big goal and it seems intimidating right but you know that's what you want it aim for right we know that probably we're going to aim high and end up a little bit lower but if you're aiming to break even and you end up lower you're in real trouble right so the goal should be look at you know aim higher than you need to hit hopefully you hit a little bit below there and you made enough money to fund your next game fund your studio for another game that doesn't succeed or whatever i understand that all this stuff is probably like you're like oh yeah this is not encouraging right i get it but at the very least, if we're gonna make a leap of faith and we're gonna kind of be brave and be risk takers, let's also just have some real numbers of like, okay, these games made this much. I think I need to spend this much. You should double whatever your estimate is, right? Because it's always double. And then look at it and be like, okay, is there even a chance that this is gonna be profitable, right? Because if you're looking at a very small genre that has really poor sales results and you're thinking about spending a big budget to get there, you probably just shouldn't do it if your goal is to be profitable, right? Uh, so, you know, I know it's a little bit of bitter medicine there, uh, but I think that just do some basic math, right? Look at the games that are, you can kind of compare yourself to realistically. Do this rough math on both their gross numbers, their net numbers, look at your rough budget of i think yeah we probably need about you know 100 or five hundred thousand dollars to make this game or whatever the numbers are right for one if you take that to a publisher you have a much better chance or to a grant giving body or whoever it is you're asking for money they are going to want to see that you at least did this kind of napkin math level planning of like yeah we see these games they made this much we think we can you know, beat or be similar to them. So there's a chance that we make money. Everybody knows that there's also a big chance that we lose money, right? But at the very least, they'll say, okay, yeah, this is at least, it's not crazy, the numbers that we're talking about here. They've kind of tried to do the basic math that there's a, a possibility that this succeeds and makes money. 
And I think that is, uh, will improve your chances of getting funding as well. So let me know what you think about this. Drop a comment on the video. For more like this, check out the Level 2 Game Dev newsletter, which I've linked in the description. That's a newsletter by me and Charles from Infallible Code. We'll also be sending out the beta invite for our Unity for Software Developers paid course that's coming out soon. Drop a like on the video for the algorithm, please. Subscribe if you're not already. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.